Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here. Today we're going to take a look at Fedora 21. Now this came out first week of, uh, of December, uh, but with how busy things have been the past few weeks, you're getting ready for Christmas and all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, I uh, just now I'm finally getting a chance to sit down and, uh, and play around with this distribution. Uh, and also, I am new to Fedora. You know, most of my experience comes from uh, the Ubuntu-based distributions, and then also uh, the Arch-based distribution. So, uh, I'm a newbie when it comes to Fedora. So, as you're watching this uh, this review, you know, just kind of remember, hey, I'm coming at it from uh, from the perspective of somebody that's kind of new to Fedora. And and I'm not going to say it's uh, you know. Uh, um, harder or less hard to learn than some of the other uh, distributions that I'm familiar with uh, but there are things that are different so there is a little bit of a learning curve so uh, you know if you're you know familiar with the Ubuntu distributions uh, there there are some things that are different all right well let's start things out by taking a trip over to the Fedora website and that's what I've got up right here and uh, as you can see, they've got up at the top of the page here, they've got this Fedora's Now More Focus. Um, and they've set up basically three spins, I guess you want to say, of, of Fedora. You've got your standard workstation, which would be your desktop, uh, a spin for the servers, a spin for uh, minimal cloud images. So, uh, you know, two thumbs up to the to the Fedora team for for setting that up because that's definitely going to save some effort, uh, you know, especially for for the people setting up the server and cloud uh, uh, distributions. If you come down here to the bottom of the page, you can you've got your download links, uh, the workstation, the server, the cloud, and then the Fedora spins. And and the reason the the spin thing is kind of important is uh, the standard Fedora distribution is GNOME 3, period. Not, you know, nothing else, it's GNOME 3. So if you do not like GNOME 3 and want a different desktop environment, you need to come down to the Fedora spins. And from here, you can find, you know, KDE, LXDE, XFace, um, you know, Mate, a whole slew of different desktop environments, um, depending on what it is that uh, that uh, that that uh, interests you. Um, you know, I've always been a GNOME three fan, but I do realize that there's a lot of people that uh, you know, the GNOME three is not their thing, and that's cool. You know, uh, whatever works for you. Um, uh, you know, if you're not if you're not into GNOME 3, definitely check out the spins. Still got the same Fedora core, uh, but you know, like I say, get get the uh, the desktop environment that you like. So let me get this out of the way, and we'll start taking a look at what we got going on here. All right, so here we are on our desktop, and uh, what you see here is what you get when you uh, when you uh, uh, set up this distribution. I have not changed background images or theming or anything like that. Um, and uh, while I'm talking about installation, installation went down without a hitch. So, uh, you know, pretty happy about that graphical ins uh, installer. Very nice to work with. Um, all the steps are, are nicely laid out. Um, Really, you know, basically, as long as you can follow directions, you'll be able to get through the whole installation process. Um, you know, if you've done, say, the Ubuntu installer, uh, you'll you'll have no problem with this one. So, as I said before, we're running uh, GNOME 3 for our desktop, uh, GNOME 3.14 to be exact, which is the latest of the GNOME. Um, the GNOME releases and so let me go and open up an application here just so we can take a look actually I'll put a couple of things um,
and one of the things that you'll notice is our you know our unified header bars these are um, you know they're looking better and better uh, at least from the standpoint that it's a more unified look whereas you know previously in earlier versions of GNOME not all of the uh, not all the applications had that that unified look so uh, you know big thumbs up to the to the uh, GNOME team on that um, other changes for 314 have not been they have been huge like one thing that we've got here you can see the new animation that was added for 314 not a big deal but you know it does add a little bit of eye candy alright so we've got gnome boxes for virtual box uh, cheese webcam clock that which is the gnome clock application got our contacts, documentation, development assistant, empathy, evolution, uh, our good old-fashioned uh, Nautilus files, Firefox for our browsing, gedit, the entire LibreOffice suite, uh, GNOME notes, rhythm box, and of course our settings right there, shot well, um, simple screen recorder, I, that I did add for course recording my videos and along with that I also added VLC because you flip here gnome videos right here does not play nice with the videos that I produce on uh, through simple screen recorder so unfortunately if I want to go and check the quality of my videos make sure that there's no problems or anything I have to add VLC or or some other uh, uh, you know Record, not recorder but uh, uh, video viewing program uh, gnome software and I'll come back to gnome software in a minute um, transmission for uh, uh, our, our uh, torrents and, and here in the sun dry if you pull that up uh, our screen recorder problem recording troubleshooting that sort of thing and then utilities right here has got the calculator character map passwords and keys you know all all those little simple utilities and on the second page of course gnome videos gnome weather and that pretty much you know sums up all the applications there well let me pull up gnome software here because uh, yeah if you've seen my videos in the past you know that I I detest the no the um, uh, Ubuntu Software Center. Um, unfortunately, the problems that I have with the Ubuntu Software Center, um, I found a lot of the same problems here as well. So we've got a nice, you know, graphical, uh, you know, software center here. Uh, you can go just click and see different applications um, you can select your this, uh, a few add-ons for the different programs so I mean as far as that goes that's pretty neat um, and then we've got various categories here um, we've got this right here which will tell you what is installed and then this right here for updating your software so let me start with the update thing. Um, you know, I figured that this was going to keep my distribution updated. It doesn't. Um, and from what I was reading, let me check my notes here. Uh, and because there's been a lot of uh, uh, messages and, and posts on, on the forums and and various message boards and whatnot and apparently uh, GNOME software updates with idle bandwidth now what idle bandwidth means uh, I'm not exactly sure so does that mean that uh, you know um, if I'm doing something else online that it will not update or does that mean you know it's like yeah 
not exactly sure what that means. And then also, it it doesn't seem to update everything. Uh, because even after I forced it to go through updates and it told me everything was updated, I opened up the terminal and updated via terminal. The terminal found all kinds of stuff that needed to be updated on my system. Um, so this is one of those, I think it's a great idea to have it here, um, but the implementation needs some work. Uh, the other thing that I found with GNOME software is that, you know, let's say that I click on new cache and I click install. Now let's just do it just so you can see. Okay, so it's installing. And let's say that I want to go and look at what at um, at some other stuff now. Um, and this seems to be a hit or miss thing. So let me see if I yeah see now it kind of lags, hangs up while I'm trying to look at um, you know other pieces of software. Oh, and, and you see now that new cache is installed, everything's fine in that. So it can only do one installation at a time um, and this is basically my my same gripe with um, Ubuntu Software Center is that if you try giving it a whole bunch of things to install and, and download uh, it lags botches up you know crashes whatnot um, so from that standpoint uh, this isn't a whole lot of an improvement here. Uh, I mean, the one plus here is that once the software center can be ported to, you know, all distributions, then as long as you've got GNOME, you've got a software center. Um, you know, personally, I still like uh, Synaptic Package Manager and, you know, other package managers that are you know based on the same concept I can go into uh, you know synaptic and I can tell it you know I can pick out 20 different pieces of software uh, click install and it'll install all of them without a hiccup now one feature of gnome software that I really like um, and it's almost worth having uh, known software installed just so that you can do this is application folders. If we go to our overview of our applications you can see that let me go to uh, where were they? I uh, like here the SunDry. You click on that you see it's got it's basically a folder with a couple of applications. Same thing right here with the utilities. So we can go and make our own folders uh, right here. Let's just go to installed, click on the checkbox, and let's say that we wanted to make a folder with all of the LibreOffice applications in it, uh, which kind of makes sense. Okay, so we clicked all those, add to folder. We're going to create a new folder called Libre Office. Sweet. All right, so we're going to add it to that. Click Add. And that should be all she wrote. So now let's take a look at our applications. And as you can see, I now have this folder right here with the entire LibreOffice suite in it. Boom, they will all pop up. Now for me, I'm a keyboard kind of person. You know, I usually know exactly what I'm looking for. So it's not quite as useful for me, but if you're, you know, kind of a visual person, um, you know, being able to categorize stuff like that in these folders, it could be quite useful. Well, that about finishes this review up. Uh, as always, questions, comments, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Be sure to leave it down below and uh, I will answer them uh, as, as you know, as time allows. Um, 
lots of good stuff coming in the new year. We're going to be adding a whole bunch of videos on uh, uh, gaming in Linux, and I've got a whole bunch of both software and uh, distribution reviews lined up. So uh, be sure to subscribe if you're not a subscriber so you can uh, uh, keep watching all that great stuff. Thanks a lot, and I will see you on the next video.